Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Joel and today I'm going to solve the biggest problem that I have with this Nikon P1000 Super Zoom camera. Let's get started. For those of you who've been around the channel for a while, you'll know how big a fan I am of zooming in on things with this Super Zoom camera. It's addictively fun due to the 24 to 3000 millimeter zoom. One of the biggest problems at 3000 millimeters is of course to get stable footage. As you can tell, when you're all the way zoomed in, this camera becomes quite long, almost doubling in length. Now, Nikon have only given us this one small threaded insert and a little notch over here. But other than that, it becomes extremely front top heavy. Now at this moment, you're probably wondering why not just get like a long quick release plate and put it on the bottom of the camera. It is a little bit better than a short quick release plate, but it really doesn't add a whole lot of stability. Uh, made specifically for this camera, but everything was either a little too expensive or just not quite good enough. So I figured I like solving problems. Let's uh, take a crack at this. I started by making some measurements of the camera, how long the barrel is, where the threaded insert is, kind of the size of the barrel, a few other things and I got started in Blender, which is a free open source program. I'm kind of new to it, but it's pretty self-explanatory, so I started modeling and learning as I went. Each time I kind of started from scratch and just built it and got better and better and better at learning the software. And I got to a pretty solid V1, V2, and then V3. I started out printing with PLA plastic, which is a biodegradable, environmentally friendly prototyping plastic, usually with an infill of about 20 to 30%, which saves a lot of material and time, but doesn't make a very strong product. I never would have guessed that I would spend so much time watching a robot move back and forth, but for some reason, it is so mesmerizing watching these 3D printers go. and it's actually worked really well for me. Strong enough, it uh, snaps right in. I've been able to mount it on the bottom, on the side. I got some really great footage with this. You can check that out up there. Overall, been super pleased with it so far. But because it was made out of PLA, I knew it wouldn't hold up to the elements. It is simply not a strong enough material. So our journey must continue. We need a stronger material to stabilize this camera, and I know just where to start. With the internet, there's a ton of people that are super helpful in Facebook groups, Reddit threads, blogs, YouTube videos, you name it. That's where I've learned pretty much everything so far, and learned a lot about different types of filaments. There's lots of options to choose from. There's ABS, Peak, Petchy, and many others, but I decided to go with carbon fiber nylon, due to its high tensile strength and resistance to really high and low temperatures while still keeping its form and being very strong. We're back to hardware mode. In order to print this upgraded filament, I'm gonna have to upgrade my printer, starting with the hot end. Carbon fiber nylon prints at 250 degrees Celsius, which is quite a bit more than PLA. So if I don't upgrade, it will melt my previous one. So I'm gonna have to take the old one off Replace it with a new one, solder in some new fans and buck converters, and replace the enclosure for the whole thing. I also need to build an enclosure to place the printer in so that I can keep the ambient temperature really high, hopefully upwards of like 50 degrees Celsius, because carbon fiber nylon is notorious for warping if it's not warm enough in there. So I'm hoping that with this enclosure, I can get really solid, smooth prints. So after spending a week getting all of this stuff built, I finally got it up and running and I couldn't get the filament to stick. I ran a couple overnight prints and started to feel really defeated. You put so much time and effort into this process and at the end of the day, it just doesn't work. It's very frustrating. So I started to run tests. I figured if I can just solve one small problem at a time, I can get this thing to work right. 
So test after test after test after test, it started to work better and better and better. And I kept changing this setting and that setting and another setting in line with. Finally, after all of that, I got the filament to stick to the bed. And just when I thought that I was gonna have a perfect finished print, I ran out of filament. Of course, right? It's so close to done, but I have ran out of filament. It's empty. No. I'll be the first one to admit that was a pretty tough pill to swallow but it did give me an opportunity to take a step back from what I was doing and look at the graveyard of prints that I've accumulated. I started to try them and test them and push them to their limits and see where they would break, see where they worked well and where they didn't. I knew that I needed to make at least one more version once I got my hands on some new carbon fiber nylon. From the top again, let's do this one more time. Bought some more carbon fiber nylon, chucked it in the oven overnight as it is extremely hygroscopic, so that'll dry it out. And we're back in Blender. I'm constantly tweaking the design and I wanted to strengthen the barrel arms as I noticed that's kind of one of the weakest spots. And I think based on the feedback that I've received from the internet, it's time to drop the side mounted Argus Swiss plate. The mount itself is strong enough that if you twist your tripod head to the side, you can totally use your camera that way. I think this is a good move and simplifies the printing process quite a bit and saves some filament. Other than that, the design looks great and it's time to slice it up. During this step, we slice this model, turning it into G code, which is just computer code telling the printer what to do and when to do it. This is where the science of this really comes into play as there's over 150 different options, different settings ranging from temperature to direction to infill to layer height, there's tons. Over the past 15 prints or so, I think I've found a really good profile that I can use for carbon fiber nylon moving forward. Now that our G-code is ready, it's time to load the filament, clean the bed, prep the enclosure, and heat up the enclosure. I've got this blanket over top to keep more of the heat in. Now that it's all heated and ready to go, I just have to send it to Octoprint and press start. And now the waiting begins. It's such a bittersweet feeling, knowing there's nothing left to do but just watch and wait, but also thinking this could be the perfect print. It could come out great, I could totally sell this, or it could just fail and be another learning experience, another test getting ready for the next one. So I was about to go to sleep and I thought I'd check the webcam one more time and it seems like it's warping on the edges. So I'm gonna stop it before I waste more filament. So close. This is quite a difficult problem that I've run into. Overhangs are when the extruder prints over nothing, so you have to print a support underneath. And the overhang is kind of warping up as it's printing and not connecting to the support. So I decided to quickly try a different type of tree support and run it again tonight. We're gonna have to wait about 10 hours overnight and see if this thing works in the morning. Fingers crossed that this is the one. It's about to finish. I think it's perfect and it's done. Wow, and I'm it's gonna been running all night? Yeah. Cool. So the new supports definitely worked, although after about five minutes of trying, I cannot get them off no matter what I do. They are stuck on there real good. So back to the settings, see if there's something I missed to uh, get this to work better. After spending a few hours educating myself on supports, 
I sifted through all of the options and made my way into the extra settings of hidden features and I found something that seems promising. I found a setting that changes the speed of the extruder over the overhangs. It's a really small detail, but I think it's gonna make all of the difference. Time to slice it, send it to Octoprint, say a prayer and wait until morning to see if that worked. Good morning. Check the webcam. Print looks like it's going well. Let's, uh, let's check it out. See how it's doing. Fingers crossed. Looking really good. It's stuck to the supports. And just like that, all of those late nights and early mornings paid off. The supports came right off easily. It printed flawlessly up the corner at the slower speed and it fit right onto my camera perfectly. To finish up this print, there's only a few things left to do. I'll use a soldering iron to heat up the threaded insert and melt it into its hole. This creates a really strong bond so that you can attach other quick release plates to this product. Then I'll sand off the excess filament and make the bottom smooth. Last step is to tap the tripod screw through and just like that, we're done. I think I've spent just a little bit too long in this room, so I'm gonna get outside and shoot some stuff, maybe zoom in on some things, try this product out a bit more. If you have a Nikon P1000 and you're interested in buying one, hit up the description below and I'll show you where and how you can do that. I'm making about two a day right now, so make sure you hurry up and reserve yours right away. And if you don't subscribe to the channel yet, now's the time to do so. Hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week.